If you're watching this video, then probably you want to get a job as a data analyst or at least you are exploring this as your career. And now you are confused which all technologies do you really need to learn if you want to become a data analyst and most importantly, what are the different topics in those technologies that you want to learn. You are at the right place because this is exactly what we are going to discuss in today's video. Hey everyone, I'm Sahil Gogna and I am a data engineer in Canada. On this channel, you will find a lot of videos about data analysis, the roadmap in general, the mindset that you really need to have if you want to become a data analyst and in today's video we are going to specifically talk about the tech part which technologies do you really need to learn and what are the bare minimum topics that you should be knowing about those technologies but before we move forward and discuss all those topics in detail make sure to subscribe the channel so that you don't miss out on the any of the informational videos like this one in the future let's first talk about how much mathematics you require if you want to become a data analyst i'm pretty sure you might have heard from all of the different resources or all of the different people from your classmates that if you want to become a data analyst you need to be a wizard in mathematics but in reality i would suggest that if you are just starting out your career don't over complicate the things just to get started start with the basic statistics for example you should be knowing what's the mean, median, mode, standard deviation. Just imagine being a data analyst and you're trying to analyze the data and find the trends and then you don't know the difference between the mean and the median. So learn these basic statistics and after you have learned this, try to understand what are the different types of distributions, the skew distribution or any kind of distribution because you will be analyzing data, you'll be trying to find the patterns and if you know these things, it will help you to draw better insights out of your data. Once you have learned all these topics, then try to understand what are the different kinds of charts which are available in mathematics to represent your data. For example, bar chart, histogram, pie chart, scatter plot, there are different kinds of charts, right? So as a data analyst, you will be plotting those data. Every kind of data or every kind of problem statement that you'll be solving, it could be represented in a better way using a specific chart. For example, if you can represent some information using bar chart, Maybe pie chart is not the accurate way to represent that kind of information, right? So as a data analyst, you should be smart enough to distinguish between these kinds of charts. So you should have all of this clarity while you are learning the basic mathematics. Cool. So if you have learned the basic mathematics, then comes the important thing. Now your journey as a data analyst start because you are ready to learn your very first data analysis tool, which is Microsoft Excel. Hold on. If you think that Microsoft Excel is a very basic tool and you learned it back in your school or in your college, then definitely my friend, you haven't explored the power of Microsoft Excel. It's a very, very strong data analysis tool and most of the job descriptions that you'll see, this is the must have tool. You will find Microsoft Excel in almost all the job openings uh, for the data analyst. If you analyze it on LinkedIn or any of the other platform, you will see it. And if you want to learn Microsoft Excel, then you'll have to follow these five steps. The number one being you'll have to learn the basic formulas. Start with essential formulas like sum, if, count, VLOOKUP. Then you'll have to explore the fuzzy lookups from MS Excel add-ins for advanced matching capabilities. So once you have done that, number two, master the chart creation. Again, if you are a data analyst, you will be required to create a lot of different kinds of charts because you want to analyze data and present it to the stakeholders, right? And this is the part where you understand. Remember, we, I told you that we need to understand what are different kinds of chart. This is exactly where you use that knowledge. So all the data that you have analyzed so far, you will try to represent it in form of the charts. Number three step is to understand the pivot tables. You'll have to gain expertise in pivot tables to analyze your data efficiently by grouping and summarizing it. Number four, you'll have to explore the data analysis tool pack. Again, use this built-in tool pack for performing the statistical operations like regression and descriptive statistics. And at last, you'll have to dive into the advanced tools. For example, the Power Query for data wrangling and Power Pivot for creating the complex data models. So all these things are must have or must have when you are learning Excel because these tools will help you to analyze the data set. So once you have mastered Excel, what I would recommend is create at least one project. Go to Kaggle.com from that website, download a data set, whichever data set or whichever domain you like. If you want to get into the banking domain, maybe the retail sector, whichever domain you like, try to download a data set and practice all the formulas, all the topics that you have learned so far and try to analyze the problems, right? create some sort of uh, problem statements and try to answer them using Excel. This is how you would get to know how much Excel you really know. So once you have learned or mastered the Excel, then comes the second technology, which is SQL. 
and as a data analyst you will be writing a lot of sql queries because for most of the companies a very large volume of data set is sitting in the relational databases and if we talk about sql you'll have to start with basic sql commands for example you should know the basic select statements which will help you to retrieve the data number two you should learn the where clause which will help you to filter out the data so once you have done that you need to understand what are the crud operation create, read, update and delete. You should be able to perform these operations on the data set, on the tables or on the rows inside those tables. So once you have learned all these basic topics, another basic topic is the order by clause. Because when you are analyzing the data, you will require it to order by the ascending or descending order, right? And after this whole thing, you will be again, you are a data analyst in a big corporation, right? So you won't be working with just one data set or with just one table you'll be working with the multiple tables in data. And how do you analyze data using different kinds of tables, right? So you will need to learn something which will help you to connect different tables. And that is performed by the joins. So when we talk about the join, this is not the advanced topic, guys. Most of the students, they think that learning join is the advanced concept, but it comes under, under the basic concept. It's a bare minimum that you should definitely know if you want to get a job as a data analyst. And even the types of join, the inner join, the outer join, left, right, the self join, you need to understand what are the differences and in which scenarios you actually need to use what kind of join. So once you have learned that, you'll need to understand the aggregate function, for example, sum, average, count, these kinds of functions. And then you'll also need to understand the group by clause. And in the basic topic, the last topic are the subqueries, which simply means the query inside a query. So once you have understood all these concepts in SQL, then comes two of the intermediate topics that you should definitely know. And as an analyst, it will come very handy when you're analyzing the data. Those two topics are the window functions and the CDs. So once you have learned everything about SQL, then comes the third and the one of the most important tools that you really need to learn. Those are the data visualization tool. And if we talk about market, there are two major tools available. One is Power BI, other one is Tableau. As a student, you can choose any one of these because they are solving the same problem. And most of the companies, they will accept if you know one of these tools. So guys, if you have reached till this point of the video, I'm pretty sure that you are liking the video and you are finding it very valuable. So make sure to subscribe the channel and like this video. And now we'll continue with the video. So the first thing that you should know in the data visualization tool is data preparation and cleaning. So you should know how to connect to different kinds of data sources. For example, again, you won't be working with just one kind of file, right? So you're working at a corporation. It can be the SQL database, which is your resource. It can be the Excel file, CSV file, any kind of file, right? So you should be knowing that how do you connect or how do you consume data from these all different resources? Then you should know the transformation using Power Query and Power BI and something similar in Tableau, we have data prep. Then again, under the data preparation, you should be knowing how do you handle the missing data. As a data analyst, you will spend a lot of time cleaning your data, right? Because before analyzing, you'll have to make sure the data, whichever you're using, it's in the right state. So you should know the techniques of data cleaning in these tools as well. Number two, data modeling and relationships. We already discussed this in the SQL that you will be working with different kinds of tables, different kinds of data sets, right? So you should know how do you establish the relationships between different kinds of data sources. And inside this data modeling topic, you should also be knowing how do you create calculated columns? For example, in Power BI, we have something called DAX and in Tableau, we have calculated fields. Number three comes the most important part, the data visualization part. So once you have analyzed the data, you have cleaned the data, you should know that how do you create data visualization. This is again something similar to what we did in Excel, right? So you should know that what are different kinds of charts. And once you understand your data set, you should know that now to answer certain questions, what kind of charts do you really need to create? So that is what you should know at number three. So at number four, you should learn how do you design the dashboards. Dashboard is simply a chart which contains multiple charts, right? So again, you won't be working with just one single chart. To solve different kinds of business problem, you'll be creating multiple charts. And then you'll have to create one single dashboard which will contain all of these charts. So that is one skill that you should definitely have if you're learning these visualization tools. So once you have created the dashboards, the last important concept of data visualization is you should know how do you share it to the public. Tableau and Power BI, both of them have their web version where you can create those dashboards and then publish it on the web. See guys, you have analyzed the data, you have created the visualizations, right? But to the recruiters, you actually need to show them that these are the visualizations that you have created. If those charts, all those dashboards, they're sitting in your laptop, they won't be doing any good to you or to your interview process, right? So if you want to show it to the world, to the LinkedIn, to the other peers with whom you'll be working very soon, you need to publish them online. 
and then you can use that url to share it with the recruiters maybe put it in your resume so that the other people you don't just tell them that you have created the dashboard you actually show them this way your resume will become very strong and you will be at an edge when it compares to the other candidates so the last tool that you really need to know is python when we talk about python you should be aware of the basic python fundamentals which includes the variable declaration the different data types the loops the conditions right how do you write the functions and the error handling so this all comes under the basics of the python fundamentals number two is the data manipulation and for that you should know that how do you utilize pandas and numpy and specifically if we talk about these two libraries you should know how do you read different kinds of files for example you can be dealing with csv excel or maybe the database like sql right so you should understand understand how do you consume data from all these sources and how do you write data to these sources so once you have done that you should understand what are the python data frames and how can you perform different kinds of cleaning techniques the aggregations the joins whatever you want to do or whatever you have done in sql you should be able to do something similar in python using both of these libraries and under the data manipulation there's something another important thing which is the data cleaning I know we have talked multiple times about this uh, particular thing in, in this video, right? So as a data analyst, you'll be spending a lot of time. So you should understand what are the different data cleaning techniques and how you can do that using these two libraries. So once you've analyzed the data, once you understand your data set, you should also know that how do you create the visualization. So two of the most popular libraries when it comes to the creating visualization, they are matplotlib and cball. Again, the basics are same in Excel, in Power BI, and even here in Python, we try to understand what are different kinds of charts, right? Similar way here, you'll after you've analyzed the data, you'll need to understand which are the best charts to represent what kind of information, be it the basic bar charts or maybe pie charts or maybe some advanced charts, for example, the heat maps. So you should be aware of all the different kinds of charts which are available in these libraries. So once you have done everything, you should be aware how do you do EDA, which stands for Exploratory Data Analysis, in which you try to understand the data set, you're trying to find the trends, you try to find the outliers, right? So the whole picture of data set, you should be aware of that so that you can utilize that information, you can utilize that knowledge, and then you can solve or you can answer the stakeholders, whatever the data questions that they have. And at last, you'll have to learn the machine learning principles. If you're someone who's just starting out, maybe for now you can skip this topic. It is a topic for advanced analysts, right? So I would recommend you to spend most of your time in the first word topics. And definitely you should come back to this topic because at the end you'll be working in a data science team. You will work alongside the data scientists, data engineers. And if you know these machine learning principles, it will be very easy for you to communicate to the data scientists in their own language. So you'll be able to contribute more to the team and if you really want to learn more about how much machine learning you need to learn as a data analyst make sure to comment down in the comment section and i'll create a separate video on this so guys that was it for our today's video in this video if we have to summarize we try to talk about four major technologies that you should definitely know if you are starting your career as a data analyst and most importantly what are all the major topics that you should know if you're starting your career as a data analyst, make sure to comment in the comment section below what are the major challenges that you're facing and what kind of other videos would you like me to create in the future. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.